The first passage that we will read is in 2 Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The later end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. Brothers and sisters, this is a person who has gone to the altar. They've asked the Lord to come into their heart. They have said with their voice that they believe that Jesus, the Son of God, came incarnated in human form and died for their sins and was buried and arose. They believe. And then they go on to repent. And they receive the Holy Spirit. But then they fall away. As the seed that gets thrown on the side of the road. And the weeds choke it with lust or riches. And they literally choke the Holy Spirit out of them. And then when they go for Judgment Day, it's worse for them than if they never received or, or tasted the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? Now we're going to go to the second passage, which is found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6. We'll start reading from verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the power of the age to come. If they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame, Now, in the Wycliffe version, which is before the King James version, it says, if they slip far away, far away. This is a person who becomes saved as the first scenario and repents and receives the Holy Spirit. But then they leave, they leave the kingdom of God and the belief, right? They denounce that God and Jesus is real. They're not getting back. Now, this is a rare case. I've only seen a couple. And when I say seen, met two people, two individuals who shared that with me. One was in Africa in a village. I was preaching in a village church. And the man came forward after I read this. And he said, that is me. My son was sick and died. And I blamed God. I denounced God. That's a sad thing. That was very sad to hear. Now, we prayed for the man. And he left the church smiling. But God is the ultimate judge. You understand? God knows if he crossed over that threshold to the point of no return. And you don't want that to be you, brothers and sisters. We all have to go through trials. Everyone, no exception, has to be tested of their faith in God and their love for Him. So we all have to experience trials in our life or we won't be accepted into the kingdom. He has to test us. Do you understand? And we all want God to carry us through that trial. 
And he will. But brothers and sisters, everyone wants something from God, but not everyone wants to do something for him. Right? Don't wait till you're in the middle of the fire and say, okay, God, I'm going to serve you now, please you, and do your will. And now take me out of this fire and take all this away and give me all the riches of life. Right? No. If you have been serving him well, pleasing him and do his will, he will take you out of that fire as he did Job. And he will give you all the pleasures of life. He wants to. He wants to reward you when you get through the fire. And he wants to carry you through the fire. You understand? But who does he want to do that to? The person who does what he asks. The Lord gives us a scenario where he, he has two sons. He tells one son to do something and he says he will, but he doesn't. Tells the other son to do something and he, he says he won't, but he ends up doing it, right? So when they both want something from him, who does he give to? Hmm? Of course, the one that did it, the one that served him. You understand? So brothers and sisters, serve him, please him and do his will. And don't worry when we go through the trial because we are going through one now with covid the virus, and there's other trials to come. Jesus is coming. Make no mistake. In our generation, Jesus is coming to take his church away. Yes. But things have to happen first. Yes. And we'll all have to be tested. And you want to pass that test. And you will, and he will carry you through. If you're living for him, yes, live for him. Remember, he died for your sins and mine. And we have to give our body's a living sacrifice to him. Amen? So please him and do his will. Obey him. Do the best you can. Show love to your neighbor as yourself. Every morning, ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit, with more of it. And show the love of Jesus, Yeshua, by blessing others around you. And he will see. He sees all. He knows all. And he will bless you abundantly, brothers and sisters, abundantly. So that's what I mean when I say today is a new day and tomorrow's going to get better. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, remember to pray up every day and read up every day and keep the love of Yeshua, Jesus, in your heart. We'll all be with our Lord and Savior someday, forever and ever. Amen.